Hello, everybody. Zongetsu 134 here. And as always, I'm Evan Joe Squad. Coming hey, to you to... live from my house. <laughs> and welcome to the second episode of 2023's Remember the Hyphen, the show where we look at comic books, movies, and everything else in between. And so, uh, you remember last year? Was it the year before? I last can't... year? Yeah. Last year, we looked at the first Robocop film. Uh, that was supposed to be a series of reviews. Uh, at the time, I thought I had all three Robocops on the DVD I had, but it only had the first Robocop. But, uh, I got them all now. <laughs> uh, this is also not us setting up into doing a, uh, I have the re Robocop. I have the reboot and a disc over there, but we're not going to touch that one. Yeah. Uh, we are going to look at, we are eventually going to goo all the movies, but we're not going to try and do, like, a, mo a month. Uh, because, uh, I, I feel like this year, given how much we slid on our production time last year. I don't think we're really going to be planning out, like, months this year. Um, if we do, that's going to... I think our stuff worked best when we were, like, kind of just shooting it by ear. Yeah. But, uh, right now, we're going to take a look at Robocop 2. Uh, this is the collector's edition on the Blu-ray, of the Blu-ray. Uh, these are actually both collector's editions. Um, this is also the, uh, the second cover. The other cover is just uh, kind of generic. Um, but yeah, so Robocop 1 was a sleeper success back in the 80s. Um, uh, came out to great reviews, became a cult classic piece of sci-fi history. So they greenlit making two more Robocop films. Uh, and they also got the help of a comic book writer, Frank Miller, to do the screenplays for these. Um, I want to say Robocop 3 was directed by him, but I don't... But it turns out um, it wasn't, if I remember correctly. It was... Uh, yeah, the screenplay is by uh, Frank Miller and Fred Decker. Uh, but it was directed by Fred Decker. Um, unfortunately, Ivan Reitman did not direct these other two, like he did the first Robocop. Um, and also, this is the second and last time that Paul Peter Weller will do Robocop. Um, it's a different actor in Robocop 3. But hey, he's coming back for the video game. <laughs> he's coming back for the video game. Um, who, in my opinion, did a great job in this film. Um, but basically Robocop 2 more or less takes off from where Robocop 1 left. Um, and also fun fact, I actually, Robocop 2 is interesting because I have the Marvel Comics, uh, adaptation of this. As well as Frank Miller's RoboCop 2 graphic novel, which is um, more or less the original ideas he had. Which I would like to... F I need to find it so that we can review that. Because I would love to review that just because... Yeah. Why the fuck not? Um, but this movie went through a lot of rewrites. Uh, basically, the studio did not... like. They liked the hit Miller's script, but it was... A little out there. A little out there. Um... Like, when when I read it, it feels very much like he was trying to take heavily from The Dark Knight Returns. Um, but yeah, so basically, the plot of this film is, uh, OCP has created a strike within the Detroit Police Department. Um, basically it's running by a skeleton crew, and really the only one running the streets is Robocop. Uh, while this is all going on, uh, Murphy more or less has is slowly becoming more and more in control of his body over Robocop. Uh, to the point where he is stalking his wife because of the memories he has of his son and his wife. Uh, while this is all going on, OCP is trying to make a new Robocop as their urban pacification program has not really worked so far. Um, they've tried using Ed 209s at other police departments across the country. And if you've seen the first movie, you know how well that works out. Just because they can't go down fucking stairs. Just because they can't go down fucking stairs. So, uh, they're trying to build another Robocop. And pretty much everything has failed. Like, yeah. I still, <laughs> we're watching it, and the, the second attempt where he pulls the helmet off screens and dies, Adam's just like, like, that guy's like, nope, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> um, because basically they try to imply that Murphy was a special case. Even though they've done the exact same thing each time with the other Robocops. Um, because he is so driven by his duty. And also because he's a devout Irish Catholic. Because 
Again, Frank Miller wrote Daredevil, so he wants you to remember that. And so, um, a psychologist by the name of Dr. Fax, she comes in deciding that she wants to try and take over the Robocop uh, division and use criminals because she thinks that all they need is a drive and the desire to be immortal. Uh, this comes in the form of Kane. Because again... Oh, God. It's yeah. Kane. Well, that because Frank loves his biblical references. Uh, a drug lord slash terrorist. Because at one point he gets a hit uh, on the Surgeon General talking about how dangerous nuke the drug that is hitting the streets is. And so basically, Robocop has to deal with both OCP sabotaging him as well as Kane who has created a new drug and that's more or less the basic premise for this film um so before again uh, you have never seen this before I have but it's been a long time uh, this is your first time viewing it what, what were your thoughts going um, into this film I definitely thought it was it was pretty good I don't think it was nearly as good as the first one but they were kind of like on an even yeah plateau if you will um you can definitely tell there was I think this probably had a higher budget. Yeah, much you can definitely budget. tell. Um, the special effects were a lot better. Um, the claymation, especially from what we saw, was definitely a lot like in, a lot better. It looked it looked yeah. nicer. It looked a lot more streamlined. I mean, you could still tell it was claymation because claymation has a very certain look to it whenever it's done. That you, if you know what it looks like, you can just always tell when it is. It also don't help the Blu-ray when they upscale. They also increase the frame rate, which makes the imagine watching this in four K. Oh my god. Which I, I checked. Um, these actually recently got a 4K. Yeah. This, the original one got a steel book, which I think I'm actually gonna buy. No, I that that's because I have I only have it on tape. Yeah, and I have only the DVD. I might have to upgrade to at least a Blu-ray for Robocop one. Um, they, um, sell, they sell the trilogy on there too. It's like forty yeah. bucks. Um, now what were your thoughts on the satire this time around? Because I think you and I both agree, but yeah. So we were talking about this while we were watching. It's the satire this time around. I felt like it wasn't nearly as nuanced as it was in the first film. Yeah. When it happened in the first film, there was almost a very certain style to it. Like you could tell it was there if you knew what you were looking for. Yeah. But at the same time, it wasn't. It wasn't way over the top. It wasn't completely in your face about it. This go around, I definitely felt like it was. This was the opposite. This was a lot more in your face, a lot more, like upfront with it. Yeah, which like, wasn't it wasn't a bad thing, but it definitely it was a little more on the nose. Yeah, which again, Frank Miller, because like Ivan Reitman when he wrote the first RoboCop, and he directed it, you could tell because like especially because like if you've watched Starship Troopers, he is much better with satire, because it, I think with satire, especially if you're doing satire commercials. They need to feel like they're actually, like, commercials you would see. Just a little, just over top enough to know it's satire. Like the WandaVision commercials. Yeah, something that it's like, I almost, it's why I almost liken them to being, like, inside jokes. Yeah. Because I knew, I knew people that had watched, that when WandaVision was coming out, they were watching, they're like, I don't really get it. I'm like, yeah. well, if you don't ever watch old TV, you don't, you're not going to get a lot of what they're referencing. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you need to know the premise of the joke. Like, you know, in the first film, you had like the, them playing like a nuclear, like a, a nuclear bomb game and like the, them doing a parody of the Star Wars program that Reagan was trying Whereas, to... Whereas, like, this one, you had one where, like, the guy's connection was shit, so he shoots himself. Yeah, and which... That, that like, one was like, what the, the fuck? fuck? Like, Grant, I did like the one where, like, they, they have a... They have a alternative car, like, car safety thing, where instead of, like, being a car alarm, it, like, straps the dude into the seat and electrocutes him. Which I was like, okay, that one's a little on the nose, but at the same time, it was... It felt more like the... The first film, like, where, like, they had, like, the... The, 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 uh, fake heart implants that, like, had, like, a, like, a, a, a 90-day warranty, which I'm, like, you wouldn't want a 90-day warranty on an, or, yeah, like, so it, it's definitely satire, like, um, but, like I said, I felt this go-around, it was definitely a lot more in your face, a lot more blunt, if you would, like, I, uh, it was still funny, and I could definitely tell what they were going for, but it yeah. wasn't, it didn't have that nuance that the original did. I was thinking another, another flaw with this film that is, it is way too bloated. Like, this was way longer than the first one, and, like, there were long patches of it where, like, Robocop is not even a major force in this film. Um, 
But I will admit, I think the action is just as good as the first film. There's a lot more yeah. gunplay. I, I, kind of going along with what you were talking about with the bloat, like that entire middle section where, you know, he gets taken back and yeah. reprogrammed, that kind of lasted a little longer than I would have liked. Also, that's where the satire is the most on the nose with those, like, parent groups and, like, the... Yeah, like, I, I almost feel like they could have trimmed... The, they could have trimmed at least like five, maybe eight minutes off the off the front of it. Yeah, and it would have maybe flowed a little better. What's also weird is, um, and something I actually will get the comic adaptation. Like, there's only like at the beginning a little bit with Alex and his family, and then she is gone from the film. So it got it kind of goes nowhere. Yeah, but in the adaptation, there's actually more scenes with her and him. I wonder, they, they probably might have actually filmed those, and they were probably on a deleted scene. Well, either that or that adaptation's like a... No, a, they, they're it's all going off an earlier draft, kind of like what a lot of adaptations do. Because she knows that Murphy's in there, and she talks to him. And there's like this scene where like she like talks to me like, I, I, I don't care what's happening to you, Murphy, I love you. And Robocop, because you know in this, he, he knows he's Alex Murphy. Yeah. Like he has not let, he tells her, I'm sorry, ma'am, but Alex Murphy is dead. I'm, ro like... In a, in a way, it seems less sad, because it's, it's like him trying to be like, you need to move on. Yeah, like, I'm sorry I keep following the memories that are in my body, but you need to... But, like, even though he, he is Alex Murphy, because, you know, at the end, he's like, we're only human. You know, it's, it's like him saying, like, you know, like, I, I, I do love you, but I'm not the same person I was anymore. And yeah. So, like, here, it, it, it's a lot sadder, because, like, we only have, like, a few moments with her. Yeah, it, it, I almost wonder if maybe they could have trimmed, in terms of trimming some of the bullet, they could have trimmed some of that and put some of that back in. I think it might have actually, again, flowed a little better. I also think maybe had a little bit more with Kane, because, like, he's in there, but, like, at the same time, they, like, they, there's not much with him. Like, you get, like, ideas of how his character is, because he has the body of Elvis, and he also names one of the versions of Duke Blue Velvet. Which I'm like, yes, yes, we get it. You like Elvis. And also, oh my god, the the religious like symbology symbology and, and imagery with him is so on the nose. I'm like he's I like, get it. Jesus had days like this. I'm like Bruh. No, like like I said, I, I do think it Especially because I like the, the concept of Robocop battling another Robocop. Yeah, kind of like how we saw that a little bit in the first movie when he was fighting, like, the Ed 209s and such. Yeah. You know, or, it's kind of like technology versus technology. Yeah. This is a little more, like, almost like man versus machine kind of deal. Yeah, because clearly Kane has become much more of a robotic beast than... Yeah, I he's would... lost a lot of the humanity, whereas Murphy has retained it. Yeah. Kind of proving, once again, that really Murphy is a special case when it comes to Robocop. Um, the other thing I think is really weird, and I wish they did a little better, was the kid gangster. Oh my god, that kid. Listen, I, I, I know we were supposed to be kind of intimidated by that kid. That kid was a bitch. I'm yeah. sorry, that kid was a complete but, bitch. The other thing is, they, they want you to feel for Murphy, because, like, Murphy sees his son in that boy. But at the same time, this kid is almost as he's bad. He's an asshole. Yeah, almost like, like, he's like... almost worse than Kane himself. It's like... Feel like, in your mouth one more time, bitch. I'm like, okay, calm down, dude. No, I... You literally are... You were literally young enough. This chick could probably pick you up and spank the shit out of you. <laughs> no, it, that kid is a... Like, he's one of the things, in my opinion, that's a little much in this film. Like, if you cut some of this stuff out, it would probably be leagues better. Um, what did you think of the new villain, Dr. Fax? Um, she was interesting. Um, I kind of... I kind of like the angle they went with. I... Although, even though, like, I know that you mentioned that, like, Miller has a thing against psychiatrists, which comes really, really, bleeds through a lot. Yeah. Um, I kind of like it because it's not, it's not something that's, like, the same as it was in the first film. We're going yeah. with something different. So I can really applaud them for trying to go in a different direction. And for the most part, I definitely think it works. Like, yeah. it's, it's an interesting dynamic. Yeah. Where, whereas we've gone from having, like, a drug dealer and slash mobster in the first film. Yeah. To having, like, someone who's clearly not as outwardly violent. Yeah. Or as outwardly as much of a threat. And it's kind of more so compartmentalized in, in, in the head. If that makes sense. Hopefully yeah. I'm using the right terminologies on that. So it's, I kind of like what they went with because it was something new. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it, if it really landed. They were trying to make her intimidating. 
Yeah. I don't think that landed at all, but I definitely think that she was a good villain because I don't even I wouldn't even really say that she was the villain of the film. I think OCP was really the villain of the film. Yeah, she was kind of like a, a, a secondary the, antagonist, a symptom of the greater disease. Yeah, a, sec- a secondary antagonist, basically. Yeah. I I will admit it was interesting when she was reprogramming um, Murphy. How she talked about how like you know it takes years to fix things in the mind. With you, it only takes a few computer clicks. I thought that was at least a little interesting. Yeah, that kind of like like she had maybe attempted something like this before. You know? Yeah, so there was there was a hint of some other storylines going on there. Uh, again, going back to my knowledge of the multiple versions of this movie, in Frank Miller's RoboCop two, the they go he went a little bit more with the immortality thing where she herself wanted the immortality, because uh, originally they put Kane's brain in the RoboCop body first, to, RoboCop two body first. He fails, and then she. Fed up with with Robocop, who is she considers out outdated and out. Oh, because, well, she actually mentions in the film near the end, especially because he clings so much to his humanity, even though he is a cyborg. She herself puts her own brain in the Robocop two body and is like, "No, I am immortal now. I am a god." Which, I I I think that was interesting, but I think again, much like with Kane, would have been a little too on the nose. So I'm glad they kind of yeah that that one might be a little much. I mean. It, Maybe if maybe they would have hinted at it throughout the film better, yeah. but I think if that if that had happened with everything else in the film as it is, that would have came out of fucking nowhere. And I think because you know I I appreciate a lot of the the what makes a human human thing that they do talk about in RoboCop. I think there would have went too far and and felt a little too anime in my opinion because that's like shit you would have seen like Ghost in the Shell, which I know for a fact Frank Miller had read because he was. As much as he pretends not to be, he loves anime and samurai shit. So, like, I, I'm glad so, so, so they kind like, of... So it's like Frank... It's like uh, Alan Moore in The Occult. Yeah. Because he's, he's really, really big into The Occult. I was actually watching an interview with him last night talking about that kind of yeah. stuff. It was like, low-key... We, we need more ghosts. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, not wrong. But, like, like there's a reason why, like, we all associate Wolverine with ninjas. Yeah. Because of Frank Miller. Um... Uh, no, I, I do admit, I, there were a couple scenes I know you got really squeamish when we watched, particularly when they were taking... Oh, yeah, where they, so they cut, they cut, um... Kane's brain out. Yeah, and they show, like, the, the cup, the very top of the skull. I was like, okay, fuck, fuck, no, none of that, because I don't, I don't do body horror, I don't do medical shit, I don't like any of that stuff. Yeah. Mainly, because I'm afraid of needles, so I, I guess I'm squeamish when it comes to that kind of shit. I can watch somebody getting blown the fuck apart. No, I can't watch somebody getting a needle injection. For so. me, the part, and I think, and I think it's actually kind of brilliant, is they have his brain, spine, and eyes in like this, basically a back the tank from Star Wars, um, and they, she, they're talking with the lady that's running the RoboCop two program, and they have Kane's hollowed out face in front of, in front of Kane's eyes, and it actually kind of works where it, it almost seems like he is screaming with the eyes being dilated. Yeah, that Kane is still able to see everything. <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, that part for me is horrific, <laughs> especially because like I know he's like a, a terrorist, but like even I'm like that's a little much for this guy. Yeah, I I can definitely agree to that. Um, speaking of, what do you think of the RoboCop two design of of how he looks in this one? Yeah, like the mech. I like it. Um, you can definitely tell that like in terms of like the RoboCop two body, what they were trying they were trying to build upon everything. Yeah. I honestly could see a lot of elements of not only RoboCop but the also the Ed two hundred nine yeah. in there. Like they had kind of like made an amalgamation. Like I actually like the fact that it can go upstairs. Not only that, if it falls over, it can get pull itself back up because it can like roll its body around. Yeah, so you can tell they kind of built upon the designs and they learned from the flaws of the previous one, which I like. They didn't just commit the same mistakes. I also wonder if that if that's also a reference to the the Sony robot that. I think was being designed around the same time that also could do that where it could like, if it fell, it could like roll itself over. Yeah. Um, but like, I really like the, also the fact that like it's one whole arm is just basically a glorified gun and, um, SWAT battering ram where it is literally just this giant weapon. Like he has all these little, like little armored claws on the right side that like can like hand, Except for the arc torch. I don't understand what the why it would need an arc welding torch. Bl- blowing through stuff, probably. I suppose so. Because I, I thought it was supposed to be a taser. Repair, maybe. Yeah. There's probably a couple different reasons for having an arc welder. Um, also, again, I really like the the way they designed the... Because, the, like, already, like, you can see flaws, though, with it. Because, like, they have to feed it nuke to keep it, like, to keep him docile. I'm like, 
maybe not have used a drug dealer. Yeah. I, well, like, I had even, I had even mentioned to him when we were watching it. They made, like, when they're cutting his brain out, they make a mention of, like, oh, the brain is, the brain's perfect. And I'm like, dude, he's a drug addict. Yeah. Do you know anything about how, about what that kind of shit does to the brain? Hell, depression does shit to the brain like that. Like, what, what are you on about? Not like that. Like, even if, like, you look at a healthy brain compared to a drug brain, because I know they've, like, it they're does not, not. They're not the same. Yeah, it does not look like the, a healthy brain if you've ever seen a healthy brain. Um, but like I love the the little prop they made for the the holding unit for the t- for the tube, where it almost seems like a baby mouth, like yeah, especially when it would like almost like a baby trying to like ask for milk, yeah, you know, like that sucking note motion they do when they like it was actually again it was, it very was clever. Int- it was a very interesting design. Yeah, um, they also updated RoboCop's design. This um, whereas in the first film he's very gray and black. Um, they've added, like, a blue hue to the, the metal parts of him, which I think, uh, looks nicer on camera. It almost gives him, like, a, uh, a bluer tint. I think it works better. It makes him look more like a cop. Yeah. Um, what, what were your thoughts on the redesign for him? Uh, I really like it. Like, like you were saying, I didn't, I think it fits the character and the role a lot yeah. better. Not to mention, it also shows a little bit more of continuity. Like, they've, like, he's been upgraded a couple times since the first movie. Yeah. Which I like, you know, because it shows that there's a passage of time. Yeah. Um, I, I also, again, I, they also show Murphy without the, the helmet unit on a lot. And, like, I think they do a much better job of, like, merging Murphy's face with the cybernetics to make it look more like he is, you know, like, parts of a corpse welded inside of a suit. Yeah. Um... Although, you and I, like, while we do uh, love the special effects, there were some weird shots in this. Well, I, I think a lot of it is that we're looking at it on a on a 4K TV, yeah. played through a Blu-ray, played through a PS5, which upscales it. Yeah. So, like, the CG in some parts, just it just doesn't hold up. Well, not not just the CG, but also, like, so, like that scene of Robocop on a motorcycle when he's, like... Oh, that was fucking hilarious. Like, he's... The minute he got on the bike, I, you can ask him, I was dying. No, like... I'm like, no, he should not be riding a bike. Like, there's a couple times where, like, again, the action went a little too goofy just because of this... I, I like when he's just sitting there and he's just revving it. I'm like, what the fuck? Which... Again, I think Miller missed the point there. Yeah, like, that, that was funny. Don't get me wrong. I was very amused by it, but... Yeah. Um, but there were some great set action set pieces, like, um, when, uh, Kane tries to run Robocop over with the armored truck, and Robocop just holds on to the truck. Yeah. Those were some great scenes, and especially going through, like, like bars and stuff. Yeah, driving through a building and shit. Yeah, that, that looked really great, but there, there were some choices with the action, I think. They, they were like, no, that's satire too. But, like, the thing about the first Robocop film is that the action wasn't satire. I mean, it was satire and how overly top violent it was, but it still played out, like, more realistic, in a sense. Yeah. Whereas I think here's some of the action is, like, <laughs> we're, we're silly in satire. Yeah, I, um, I really like, cause like I said, kind of going along with what I thought of the first one, I really liked Lewis, but I kind of wish they would give her more to do in these films. Yeah. Not to mention, like, we, we brought up that it's like, she either doesn't shoot, or empties a half, half a clip, clip in a one, one motherfucker, guy. and I'm like, "Where is the tr- where's the trigger discipline?" <laughs> Especially doesn't help that I know it. I it's either this or the TV show. She does die eventually, which, in my opinion, I don't think was a good move. It's probably the third movie, which, whatever, I can ignore the third movie because it seems like everybody else does anyway. I mean, we're gonna have to watch it eventually, but like, yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, yeah. No, I yeah. It's um, my brain, and I get to decide what the fuck's canon. I mean, she lives in the in the cartoon. Yeah, but, where they imply she is in love yeah, with him. I think that might be, um, something I could say what might be a failing is that they don't really flesh out any of the the returning side characters. Which, yeah. to be fair, it's not really their film. Yeah, it, it's, whereas it's Murphy, so like I kind of get it, but I also am like they could have done maybe a little more with the side characters. Yeah, but that I, might be just a nitpick. I do admit, I it's fun seeing how like because in the in the first one, OG or the, the 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 police station didn't really accept or know what to do with him. By this point, they love him. He is straight up just a, a cop, just like the rest of them. And like that scene where like Even he's the all chief's like he's one of mine. Yeah, fix him. Like I actually love when they're all like they're not going to do anything. They're just going to let him die. Like they actually care about Murphy. 
Like to the point where they don't even really call him robot. Yeah, like when he goes in, uh, when he goes and electrocutes himself to reset himself, they're yeah. just like, like pick him up. Pick He's hot. Use your jacket. Like they're actually yeah. like using like. I, that's one thing I actually will give praise to this film for is that the side characters and the characters around the main character, they're not fucking stupid. Yeah. Which is uh, something I see happen in a lot of films where if you're not the main character, you're just a fucking idiot. Well, not like that. Like, they, they could have done the stupid thing and make all these cops incompetent despite the fact that that's not the problem with with the Detroit police. Yeah, exactly. Like they, But they actually show that like these these are people. They have they have brains. Yeah. I really, really like that because, like I said, there's been a lot of movies I've seen where if you're not a main character, you are literally a fucking idiot. Um, now, what do you feel about how, like, the old man, like, the... Because the, he doesn't have a name. He just called the old man, the head of OCP... Did you like the fact that they kind of made him more villainous than he was in the first film? Um, I kind of like it, almost like, like him him doing the thing at the end of the first film where he fires Robocop in order to get him to shoot that guy. You could almost like retroactively be like, well, that was obviously a ploy to get that guy out of the way. Yeah. So you, I can kind of see where they're going with that. Yeah. Um, I I think it. I I don't want to. So I. I don't want to say that I don't think it fits the character because I definitely think you can make an argument for it. Yeah. But he definitely went through a little bit of a tonal shift in this film, but I don't think it was anything bad. No, I don't think I don't think it's bad, but it, it feels a little weird. Like, again, because I I hate putting all the blame on Frank Miller because I doubt it's all his fault. Because I, I can clearly tell the studio reeled him back a little bit in this. Come RoboCop 3, no, not so much. Um... But, like, I, I do think it's a little weird how he's a little bit less intelligent about his evil. Like, it, you like because in the first film, he is very much uh, an 80s exe- excess. Um, but I will say, though, is, man, his lawyer is, like, straight up an asshole. Yeah. Like, I'm like, dude, I get you're supposed to be a muhaha evil lawyer. Dial it back a bit. Yeah. Um, they also introduce a new doctor that takes care of RoboCop on, on site. She's a little weird to me, um, mainly in the fact that she she almost seems like she wants to fuck RoboCop. Um, which I think, again, in in Frank Miller's RoboCop two, the film ends with Lewis kissing RoboCop, but RoboCop being like, "We can't be together because I'm a cyborg." And I feel like they kind of split the personality between Lewis and that cop doctor. Yeah. Which I think there's po- there's probably positives and, and negatives to both of that, but... I still find it weird that anyone wants to fuck RoboCop because, like, I'm pretty sure from the waist down he is all mach- machinery. Yeah. And B, he is basically a corpse being preserved by a robotic suit. It's a, some people are into dead people. I, I mean, fair. Mary Shelley lost her virginity in a grave. Yeah. So her mother's grave, actually. All right, so ratings-wise. I'm going to give this a, a 8.5 out of 10. Really, really solid. I liked it. Um, I didn't like it nearly as much as the first one, but it's pretty damn close. Yeah. Um, I definitely don't think there was a drop in quality with the film. Like, I think there was just a little couple things here and there that I would definitely nitpick in comparison to the first one. But overall, it's still a really, really good, solid picture. I'm probably going to give it a 7 out of 10, and that's mostly because, I, like, knowing what I know of Miller, and just I, 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 me catching a lot of the Millerisms in this... Uh, particularly one thing we didn't talk about was a scene where after Robocop gets all those directives put into him, him and Lewis stop a robbery of an electronic store with a little league baseball team. Yeah, that that was a little weird. Oh, that that part where he where Robocop tries to read the Miranda rights to a corpse was really funny. That is, yeah, I think I parroted what what um Lewis said to him right right before right before she said it. Then I I um I do love that I um I love Murphy's reaction there, where he he literally does <laughs> without the noise. Um, I'm probably gonna give it a seven out of ten. Um, I do think this is a solid film, and if you want to watch another of the RoboCop films, you can watch this. It's pretty watchable. But given the kind of the, the bloatness and the Millerishness to the satire, it is still definitely a weaker film compared to the first. But not but not so much as like the third one in comparison. Yeah. Uh, especially because this is at least still R-rated. The third one is rated PG-13. Which is probably, in my opinion, its biggest problem. Not just due to the fact that Frank Miller wrote the screenplay. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, I would still recommend it. Um, are you glad I... I, I uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I, I am, actually. 
He's somewhere all right. He's got me turned on to Highlander and Robocop, so. Um, although I will admit, as much as I give Frank Miller crap, I do kind of want to read Robocop vs. the Terminator, which he wrote, particularly because it's so batshit insane, it's, it actually comes around to being kind of good again. Um. So crazy it's good. Yeah, like, that's probably the other thing I would recommend if you really want to do anything more Robocop-ish. Read Robocop vs. the Terminator, or just Dark Horse's Robocop stuff in general. I want to say there's one where he fights the devil. <laughs> um... Loki also think they should do, like, a Robocop versus Judge Dredd. That shit would be wild. That would be kind of wild, honestly. Especially because, like, Judge Dredd is such a fascist, whereas Robocop actually tries to uphold the law. Actually, Loki, I think Dredd would get, like, an erection seeing Robocop being... Yes. Dead or alive, you're coming with me. Man after my own eye. Then you see, uh, you see, um... Who was the girl from Dredd 2012? Uh, what's her name again? Anderson? Yeah, Anderson. I don't know why I was blanking on her I was, like, I was like, you're talking about Judge Anderson? Anderson looking at Joe. Are Joe, you, are, are you crying? No! I just had something in my eye. This... Um, but no, I like I said, I I do enjoy RoboCop too. There's at least a really good premise here, and again, solid acting from like all the major players in this. Uh, I think Frank Roller is even more good, does an even better job handling the suit. I also want to say they think I think they made the suit lighter in this one. Yeah, like the first one was super heavy to the point where they actually had to have a cooling unit installed in that thing, or like because like Weller lost like I think like seventy pounds from just sweating it out of his body while wearing the suit in Texas heat. I, I can believe it. Um, but yeah, like like I said, I think this is probably the best one of the four RoboCop films that there are. Which I can't say the same about this bad boy. But that's a rant for another day. That's a rant for another day. Um, so anyways, guys, that's our review of Robocop 2. Um, you can find this easily online. Uh, they actually, I think... I don't know if it's streaming anywhere, but... Um, I do not know if it's streaming. I know, I know it's. I know with uh, Pluto TV it's currently airing because uh, it was on one day at work. They were airing all three. I was um, like, well, they let me also, put this shit on. They also, I think, had the first one on YouTube for... Uh, you could. Like, it was free, but with ads. Yeah. Um, so it might still be on there. Um, I don't know if it's going to be, like, the R-rated uncut version. It's probably going to be the theatrical cut. But, you know, watch it there. Um, you can get these easily, though. Um, I got these off of Amazon for, like, seven... Well, I got them for Christmas, but they were, like, they were on sale for, like, 17 bucks. I think you just talked about they put the whole, the whole trilogy on a 4K Yeah, for like set. 40. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're easy to find. Um, we're not going to review the TV show or the cartoon, because I... Well, hey, I don't know if they put the TV show on DVD. If I ever get around to watching it, you can check it out on my channel. Um, but we're not going to watch the cartoons because... You know, all you need to know about that, just watch the Djibouti dub edit of the Robocop cartoon. <laughs> it literally tells you everything you need to know about that. Um, we will do the next movie in... The 2015 reboot. But we're not going to do them right away. Um, until then, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoy whatever's coming next. Uh, even I don't know what we're doing next, but uh, until then, I'm Zon Getsy 134. And I'm Average Joe Squad. And as always, we ask you to remember the hyphen and take care.